As the largest urologic member organization in the world, the American Urological Association is committed to promoting the highest standards of urological clinical care through education, research, and health policy. As thousands take to the Lone Star State for the 2024 AUA Annual Meeting, AUA TV is covering every angle. Welcome to sunny San Antonio and to the 2024 AUA Annual Meeting. I'm Atria Godfrey, your AUA TV host this week, and we are thrilled to be alongside the thousands of urologic health professionals from around the globe that are dedicated to advancing the field of urology. Today is a celebration as we highlight a decade of leadership kicking off this exciting week of science. The AUA is very progressive and the leadership has been fantastic about forward thinking, thinking about sort of identifying the future leaders in the organization and I think that was the impetus for this program. Straight ahead we reflect on the 10 incredible years of the AUA leadership program and hear from the only female urologist to participate in the inaugural class. So the ILB is for everybody. We develop programs, resources and training to support leadership development and business acumen in our urology community. Plus, we dive deep into the many opportunities the AUA is providing this week to those looking to sharpen their leadership skills. And we take you to the exhibit hall floor for our Emerging Corner segment. New companies, new products, and new solutions to benefit the field of urology. Plus, we kick off our tour of the institutions and organizations blazing new trails in urologic research. Today, we focus on some of those right here in the state of Texas. There's a lot to get to on this exciting first day and plenty of ways for you to watch. You can always find the latest AUA TV episodes playing on the TVs throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the shuttle buses to and from the convention center, on the homepage of the AUA meeting website, and on our YouTube and X pages. Joining us now to help kick off this exciting week of science is AUA President Dr. Randall Meacham. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Atria. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we're so excited. You know, you're giving the presidential address today, and one of your key messages is, together we can do this. What do you hope attendees will take away from that message? It's a good question. I, when I put together that presentation, I, I was thinking about, I was reminded of something that Helen Keller said, which is, Alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. And that is really what I'm wanting to emphasize, that acting as a community, uh, although there are a number of challenges facing medicine, uh, mm -hmm. we can make a lot of progress, but we need to do it by working together and collaborating with each other. And you lead me right into my next question. How important is a sense of community? Is collaboration among urologists? How important is that to the field of urology? I think it's really important. And one of the things that I, I think we're definitely doing is recovering from the global pandemic when we weren't able to come together. We yeah. weren't able to share ideas. And I think really importantly, we weren't able to provide support for each other. Mm -hmm. So now that we can get back together, it is so much better. So this week is very important. Yeah, it is very important. Uh, seeing colleagues, comparing ideas, uh, and, and really just exchanging information and knowing that we have friends that are going to collaborate with us and help us succeed is really, really important, I think, to everyone. As you look back over the last year, any uh, highlights, any key accomplishments that you're most proud of? Yes, uh, I just came from the AUA Nexus, uh, mm -hmm. which as you probably know, is an opportunity for uh, researchers and clinicians to work with their counterparts in industry. So many good ideas have come up. And again, I want to emphasize that coming together like that, spending time together, comparing new thoughts and ideas has been really important. So I, I would say that, and again, recovering from the pandemic, getting back into a place where we can have dialogue with one another, um, I think has just been fantastic. And I'm actually very proud of that. As in your role, you obviously get to travel a lot. You get to go to these networking events. You get to talk one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with fellow urologists. What do you think some of the biggest challenges are facing the field of urology right now? One of the things that first comes to mind is we don't have enough urologists right now. Mm -hmm. uh, as the population in the United States gets older, uh, the need for urologic care is increasing. Right. And from the very beginning, we haven't had enough trained urologists uh, for a number of years. That's a challenge. It's one that we're working toward overcoming, but I think it is one of the major issues. The other is 
that the number of treatment options we have and the modalities we have are becoming ever more complex as medicine becomes more sophisticated, uh, as uh, new discoveries are made. It is a challenge for any individual or even group of individuals to keep pace with that. And this sort of educational forum, uh, I think really is just absolutely invaluable in helping given individual providers provide the care that's so important to their patients. Right. You know, we're also celebrating all this week, in particular celebrating a decade of leadership and the mm -hmm. AUA's leadership program. Why do you think it's important to nurture good leaders within the field? And what do you hope to see over the next 10 years of the program? One of the things that I think is really exciting uh, for the leadership program is that those people that attend the program have an opportunity to develop relationships with mentors. Yes. Uh, people who have gone through uh, the early phases of their career have moved into leadership positions. I think that sort of in support and an ongoing basis is, is pivotal. Another thing that's very important is the AUA sections are working to bring the graduates of our leadership program into activities within their, develop, their divisions and develop leadership roles. I think that process is pivotally important. Uh, and then finally, at least in my institution, and I know in many others, these are people that are are being asked to have leadership opportunities and roles in their own institutions. So we've spent 10 years developing a very good program. Now the next phase is seeing these leaders put what they've learned uh, into action and also then to become mentors themselves. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for all of your work over your term and I hope it's a wonderful week ahead. Thank you very much for letting me spend time with you. The AUA Leadership Program is designed for urologists who have demonstrated leadership skills within organized medicine and who wish to further develop these skills to become the AUA leaders of tomorrow. And we are so excited to be celebrating 10 years of the program. Joining us now here in studio is one of the very first graduates of the inaugural year and, we should point out, the only female graduate from that first year, Dr. Kathleen Kobashi. Pleasure to meet you and have you with us today. Thank you, Thank you so much for having me. Can you believe it's been 10 years? I cannot, actually. It's <laughs> It's a little scary to think yeah. that. <laughs> um, okay, let's go back. What exactly is the AUA Leadership Program? So the AUA Leadership Program, the, the AUA is very progressive and the leadership has been fantastic about forward thinking, thinking about sort of identifying the future leaders in the organization. And I think that was the impetus for this program. They designed this program to sort of identify people who would be interested and then give them exposure to what the AUA is all about and all the behind the scenes things that the AUA does and then give some extra training on how to be a great leader. And, and, and then the other thing, of course, is that it really gave exposure, gives exposure to the mentees, to the leadership within the AUA uh, in the sectors of things that they're interested in pursuing. So you were part of the inaugural program, the only female urologist. How did you even get involved in that program in the beginning? Honestly, it was a little bit by luck. I can tell you when I look at it, I see the mentees that are in there these days. I mean, thank goodness I'm not trying to apply right now. There's no way I'd be in there. But uh, but it was a little bit by luck that it was a new program and it caught my eye and, and, and um, I threw my name in the ring and, and it was a great, great experience. And you've continued to give back to this program that has, that helped you so much. You're now a mentor. Yes, I am. Which How'd that come about? <laughs> I feel old now. No. But, um, it's been great. You know, I was really flattered and um, stoked, excited to be part of the mentor uh, class. Uh, I continue to learn from the the mentees and, and the other mentors. And, and the program has evolved a lot, actually. Okay. There's um, And it's been fun to watch that. Okay, final question before I let you before I let you leave. Um, how big of a role has the leadership program played in your professional development? Uh, it's been it's been pivotal in many ways. So again, I got into it. I feel like by by a little bit of luck and happenstance. But uh, what the AUA embarked upon this program for is to identify people who want to get involved in the AUA and to invest in them. You know, that's actually how it's evolved into like really introducing people to what the AUA does and you know, what, what, how we can make a difference. And that involvement has really opened a lot of doors and made, you know, I've made a lot of friends and, and really it's been a great networking. And, and again, I keep learning every day from the mentees. It sort of keeps me in the, in the loop about what the younger people are thinking. So <laughs> it's been really fun and educational. Well, great. Well, congratulations on the last 10 years and we look forward to seeing what happens over the next decade. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your including me here. 
Let's head now to Texas Children's Hospital to learn about the largest pediatric hospital in the world and their unique multidisciplinary approach to serving children and their families. Along with the mission of, of Texas Children's Urology, we really want to take care of all aspects of a child's uh, care, and that is uh, we want to take care of the most common uh, urological issues, but also the most complex and esoteric problems that simply other hospitals can't really uh, uh, care for as we have. And when I also say what great things we're doing, I really want to say that it's, it's an, on a scale that's like no other hospital. We are the largest children's hospital in the U.S. and in the world, and we simply have uh, about 12 to 15 million population that we care for. When we treat a child, we're not just treating the child, we're also treating the family. And there is nothing more honorable than caring for someone's child. And when you're caring for that child, you're, at the end of the day, caring for the entire family. They have all invested in their family, and that's what you're bringing to the table. Continuing our focus on kids, the Pediatric Urology Program at Riley Children's Health is the third leading program in the nation as ranked by U.S. News & World Report. Skilled in open, endoscopic, and robotic urologic surgery, the fellowship-trained urology surgeons are internationally recognized for their expertise in treating complex urologic conditions. The mission of Riley Children's Health Pediatric Urology is to offer world-class care to patients where they need it. There are very few programs that have had lasting pediatric urologists for such a long time. Our highly skilled team is able to care for the most complex pediatric urologic conditions, including spina bifida, both in adults and children, posterior urethral valves, bladder extrophy, epispadias complex, and even more rare conditions. With our long history and our excellent patient outcomes, we look forward to what the future has in store and the innovations that we'll make in the coming years. New to AUA this year, P2s. These paradigm-shifting, practice-changing clinical trials in urology are designed to showcase the exceptional groundbreaking studies that are expected to change the day-to-day -day practice of urology. AUA TV is thrilled to bring you P2s and clinical trials currently in progress in today's AUA Spotlight on Science. Our study, apalutamide for high-risk localized prostate cancer following radical prostatectomy, was a phase two open label trial um, that we completed um, recently. What makes this study so groundbreaking is that you have to realize that there'll be 300,000 new cases of prostate cancer in the United States. Approximately 15% of them will be high-risk localized disease. Of those patients that undergo a radical prostatectomy, 45 to 65 percent of these patients will fail their radical prostatectomy within five years. So what we are looking at is can we use apalutamide plus ADT after surgery to improve those outcomes? And if you look specifically at the literature, that in two years, most patients, 25 percent of the patients, will fail their surgery. So I think this is going to be a paradigm shift for prostate cancer, which is really no different than colon cancer or lung cancer, where we use combination systemic therapy with surgical therapy to improve outcomes. As we've stated, these patients do so poorly. Can we, can we combine surgery with apalutamide and ADT to improve outcomes and allow our patients to live longer? The data that we present shows that we have a biochemical free survival rate of 100% at two years. Um, so we are waiting the results of the Proteus trial, which is complementary to the APA-RP trial that we presented, and that will tell us definitively whether apalutamide plus ADT will improve metastasis-free survival and eventually overall survival, biochemical-free survival. 
Uh, so a cytokick study is a trial using a combination of two medicines, nivolumab and cabozantinib, uh, in conjunction with surgery to treat metastatic kidney cancer. So what's different about this study is that traditionally we've either gone directly to surgery and then given patients medicines or used medicines only and not done surgery, where with Cytokick we're doing three months of medicines, then surgery, then more medicines. So this is a trial in progress, so enrollment is ongoing, um, but we did look at specifically a safety question uh, going into the study where because of the half-life of cabozantinib, which is a long-acting drug, we wanted to make sure there weren't going to be any issues uh, with patients going to surgery. We initially held cabozantinib for three weeks prior to cytoreductive surgery. We saw no safety concerns and were able to reduce that down to two weeks. So patients get three months of therapy, holding cabozantinib for two weeks prior to surgery, have cytoreduction, and then go back on drug. It's really exciting for us to be featured in the Learning Lab. Again, it's a tribute really to our patients and their families for believing in the research and volunteering to participate, as well as the fantastic behind the scenes uh, clinical research teams at all of our participating sites, Cleveland Clinic, Columbia University, Rutgers Cancer Institute, and The Ohio State University. The, the treatment for kidney cancer continues to evolve rapidly. Specifically, the role of cytoreductive surgery continues to be a major question. Uh, we hope that by using this method of systemic therapy, followed by surgery, followed by more systemic therapy, we'll be able to uh, really advance the field and help patients get the best outcomes we can. To Baylor's Division of Male Reproductive Medicine and Surgery, where they are redefining urological standards with a holistic approach to male infertility, sexual dysfunction, and testosterone replacement therapy. Let's check it out. The Division of Male Reproductive Medicine and Surgery at Baylor College of Medicine is a division of the Department of Urology. It was started in 1998 and actually represents the first division of its kind in the United States, incorporating both clinical and basic research as well as a focus on patient care. It primarily consists of three areas, that is male infertility, erectile dysfunction, and hormone therapy for men. We're now looking more globally at establishing an actual men's health center. And we will be doing so in the next six months, bringing together both our clinical research, our basic research, and our clinical accomplishments to focus on a general clinic just for men's health. Keeping to the topic of fertility, building families is a life's work for two Austin-based brothers who followed in their father's footsteps to become fertility, reproductive, and endocrinologist specialists. Let's learn more about Austin Fertility. It is a true privilege to be able to work with our patients who want to build their families. Um, it's a very unique opportunity. And it's a very stressful time for them, so they need a lot of emotional support as they're working through this process. We have a very unique practice model where we have reproductive endocrinology and reproductive urology under one roof. This was in an academic setting where we saw this model and were able to translate into the private practice setting and we were the first in the United States to be able to do so. That really gives couples a sense of comfort. You know, going to the same place, they're familiar with the staff that takes care of them clinically and that puts them at ease. The whole Austin Fertility and Reproductive Medicine team just made us feel like family. It's a privilege to be able to help these couples. When something works in this field, when we get a live birth for a patient or a couple, it is the most amazing feeling. It's awesome to be able to see them achieve their dreams. Whether you are just starting your career, seeking career advancement, or looking to master the business challenges facing today's urology practice, the AUA has you covered. Dr. Ken Berger, Chair of the ILB Education Committee, is here in studio now to explain. Pleasure to have you with us today. Great to be here, thank you. All right, let's get started with who the ILB is for. So the ILB is for everybody. It doesn't matter what stage of practice you're in, whether you're a resident, at the end of your career, we have offerings for everybody. We develop programs, resources, and training to support leadership development and business acumen in our urology community. 
And so let's talk a little bit about some of those offerings. What can people expect this week? And is there anything in particular you'd like to highlight? Well, we have a great lineup of courses this week. We started off yesterday with a four hour course on empowering physician leaders. Today we have efficiency and time management hacks, uh, followed by helping to develop a business culture. Tomorrow we have uh, billing and coding, and then uh, negotiation. And then the, on the following day, Saturday, we have defending and avoiding malpractice and the business of urology. So there's really something for everybody. Right, regardless of stage of career. Regardless of stage of career. And this is not just for people who are actually here on site with us it's in San Antonio. Not, it's not, we also have an on-demand option. So everybody who registers for the track can watch these courses from home. In addition, we also have a podcast that's free to everybody. And that covers a whole variety of leadership and business uh, topics. And uh, anybody can download that, listen to it in your car, or on your way to work. Right, yeah. and that's new, correct? It's been around for about a year. Okay. And we've, we're building up a really good repertoire of podcast episodes. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, we're focusing today on leadership and, you know, we're celebrating 10 years of the leadership program at AUA. In your opinion, why is it so important to nurture good leaders within the field of urology? Well, I think it's important in, in every field, but I think urologists tend to be born leaders. I think we kind of straddle a, a line in medicine. We're surgeons, but we also do medical management. We understand both sides. And I think that that sets us up to be leaders in the field of medicine. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank, thank you. you for all of your work Appreciate on the committee it. and best of luck this week. Thanks, good to be here. Time to head to AUA's Emerging Corner, where these companies are showcasing their products and technologies in front of thousands of urology professionals. AUA is a great place where all our you know, target audience urologists who we would like to work with, they're here. We have a lot of meetings, great communication, a lot of feedback, a lot of inputs to improve our product further. So we're developing a solution for continuous in-home uh, symptoms monitoring. We develop a solution that simply attached to the patient's toilet bowl, and every time a person goes and do regular things in the restroom, it collects a lot of the data. And so all the information doctors need to have to understand objectively how their patients are doing the, uh, the, the, our vision, the end goal is to have one maintenance-free product that can be configurable based on disease history or like patient's predisposition to some illnesses. So it can be configured as, as precision medicine and also objective and digital, digital information for better uh, clinician decision-making process. Spectacure is a company that develops um, a new method for treatment of prostate cancer based on uh, photodynamic therapy. And that works by uh, giving the patient a uh, photosensitizing drug. And uh, then we have a laser device that delivers laser light to the tumor area and that activates the drug locally. So it's a localized treatment uh, that causes tissue destruction uh, where the tumor is. In the short term for Spectacure, we, we want to uh, continue our clinical trials uh, and also expand the clinical trials. And then of course, in the, in the long term, uh, we hope that this can be introduced as a new approved uh, method for treatment of prostate cancer. We have a clinical trial going on now, a phase two clinical trial, and we have hospitals in the US and, and in uh, Canada. Uh, so we're here to meet some of the investigators in our clinical trial, which is very good to meet them face to face in a meeting like this. Uh, and we're also looking uh, to potentially find new collaborators here uh, in North America, new, new clinical centers and new investigators. So we are a startup from Denmark that is developing an innovative laser technology which is going to be used for treatment of low-grade bladder cancer. Uh, the idea is to enable urologists to treat more patients in the outpatient and office settings than in the operating room. The future will uh, make it easier and, and more gentle and safer for urologists to treat low-grade bladder cancer in an office setting and we'll be able to move patients from the operating theater to the uh, office treatment or simpler outpatient settings where they don't need uh, use anesthetics. Quite a lot of exciting new products and technologies on the horizon. Remember, the Science and Technology Hall is open each day this week, so make sure to check out all of the exhibitors. Well, that's a wrap on day one of AUA TV. We hope that you've enjoyed looking back at the incredible opportunities the leadership program has provided over the last decade and are excited about what's still to come this week ahead. 
If you missed any portion of today's episode, remember, you can always find the latest AUA TV episodes playing on the TVs throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the shuttle buses to and from the convention center, on the homepage of the AUA meeting website, and on our YouTube and X pages. Thanks again for your time today. We will see you right back here tomorrow as we turn to AUA's focus on the future. Go have a great day, everyone.